by request. Essential maintenance tips to keep your 3D printers running efficiently and safely. Recently, I had some requests on covering 3D printer maintenance, and this included the questions of what to do when you're bringing your printer back online after it's sitting around for a long time, or what to do with it before you put it away for a while. Whether you're running a single printer or a non-stop print farm, maintenance is essential to keep your printers working efficiently, reliably, and at their safest. In this video, we're gonna have a series of tips for doing just that, and however exhaustive I made this, I'm sure I'll miss some things, so please watch to the end and comment down below anything that you might like to add. Let's begin. The first item on our menu is dust and debris. This GTEC A10M has been sitting broken for some time now. A while ago, I input some time and money getting it ready for some upgrades, but one day the main board went pop for no reason. I ordered a replacement board, but it was the wrong one. I'll probably put an SKR 1.3 in eventually, but for now, it's just sitting around gathering dust. Removing superficial dust is pretty easy if you have a dedicated cloth. If you don't, you can use a combination of paper towel and IPA, and that'll help attract the dust and remove it from the surface. If it leaves behind tiny wisps of paper, you can blow it away. Your print surface can probably be cleaned with IPA as well. As we know, a clean first layer is really important. Some surfaces such as PEI and this version PEX actually benefits from a light scuffing with IPA and steel wool from time to time. How about some less obvious places? You might find that the V rollers on your printer are a magnet for dust. Again, paper towel and IPA to the rescue. Simply touch it on the V roller, run it back and forth, and you should have all of the muck off in no time. On a printer with round hardened rods and linear bearings, Dust will build up near the ends and can once again be removed with paper towel soaked in IPA. On a printer with linear rails, we can use the same combination to get rid of any surface dust. Another less obvious place that dust can build up is inside your cooling fan ducts. If this dust was to build up enough to clog up the heatsink, the performance of the hot end would suffer. A bristled vacuum cleaner will remove most of the dust and debris. And for those stubborn bits left behind, you can switch to a Q-tip soaked in IPA and give those hard to reach areas a little bit of a scrub. This is also a nice way to clean the rear side of the fan blades. This might leave behind some fluff, so be sure to extract that with a vacuum or tweezers. It's worth inspecting inside your mainboard to make sure there's no dust in any of the heat sinks. You shouldn't use a vacuum in here, so instead use a compressor, canned air, or just blow really hard. Printers such as the Ender 3 have an upward facing cooling duct. This is prone to pieces of printed plastic falling in, so please check and clear them. If you know one of your printers is not going to be used for an extended period of time, consider wrapping it in some sort of bag to keep the dust out. The next item in our maintenance agenda is the motion system. The ready printers that use V rollers may have the eccentric tightening nut loosen over time. Check for wobble and then use a spanner to tighten them up which makes the V-rollers grip more tightly and eliminates the play. But is it possible for them to be too tight? Absolutely. You can see there's a flat spot here, exacerbated by overly tight V-rollers, and the carriage gets stuck there repeatedly. In this case, our aim is to loosen the eccentric nut and take a little bit of pressure off the V-rollers to help ride over that flat spot. If you think some of your rollers have permanent damage, you can buy replacements quite cheaply off the internet and substitute in as necessary. Hardened rod systems don't have anything that needs adjustment, but it's still worth checking for wobble and play to see if any bearings have worn out. In the case that they have, you can buy the same hardened rod and linear bearings to substitute as necessary. Pretty much all 3D printers use belts as part of their motion system. If they've lost tension, simply undo the tensioner, pull it as tight as you can, and tighten it back up again. You want the belt to have a good amount of spring when you depress it down with your finger. If you're looking for a more user-friendly system, there are designs available that you can print that tension the belt with a twist of a knob. I have been asked whether you need to take the tension off the belt before the printer goes into a layoff, but our belts are reinforced, so it wouldn't hurt, but it shouldn't really be necessary. We'll now turn our attention to lubrication. A great product to have on stock for 3D printers is SuperLube Synthetic Grease. It's formulated with PTFE, so it's pretty handy, but take care to keep it away from your eyes. V-rollers don't need this, 
but for hardened rods, you can squirt a little bit onto some paper towel and with the carriage the whole way to the left, apply it just to the right hand side. You'll then very slowly travel the carriage by hand to the right hand side and reapply some grease, but this time on the left hand side. With this in place, we can very gently move the carriage back and forth along the full extent of its travel to help spread out the grease and work it inside where the ball bearings reside. I've linked a great video in the description that talks about lubricating linear rails. This super lube is suitable for top ups. You can rub a little bit into the side of the linear rails and then gently move the carriage back and forth to help work it into the ball bearings within. The correct way, however, is to undo these two little screws under the cap and there'll be a central hole where you squirt in your lubricant. One area that definitely needs this grease is the junction between the z-axis lead screw and nut. I find the easiest way to add grease is to actually undo the coupler at the bottom above the stepper motor, pull it out and then twist the lead screw to remove it completely from the nut. This will allow easy access to squirt grease into the inside of the nut and then we can reapply the lead screw wiping off any excess on the underside, and then after that, twisting it the whole way from the top to the bottom and back to the start, with the intention of spreading the grease evenly over the lead screw. Next up, we're going to inspect our printer's wiring. On some printers, these connectors have been known to overheat, so check for black charring on the outside and the inside. My one, fortunately, is still doing fine. Also check all of the high current connections on the mainboard, these are the ones that go into the screw terminals. If any of these start to come out, the resistance will be raised and they'll run a lot hotter and risk melting the plastic. Make sure the wiring is properly seated and that the screw terminals are nice and tight. You can move your way around the printer, following the loom and making sure that each plug is plugged properly into its component. And also check for potential pinch points where the wiring might be rubbing on some metal parts. You're looking for any signs of damage on the cable exterior. Strain relief is equally important. Make sure that everything is still in place and your cables are supported. Another important one is to check the cable sheathing and make sure it hasn't been rubbing and wearing away on metal components. This one here is definitely due for replacement. Next up, it's time to check the fasteners around our 3D printer. Most fasteners are very easy to get to and you can use standard tools such as an Allen key to ensure they're still tight. 3D printers have a lot of vibration and you might find that some of these work loose over time. One of the most important ones to check is the mount for your hot end. If this is wobbly, it will absolutely destroy your print quality even if the rest of the machine is perfectly tight. Another one that's very easy to overlook is the grub screws on the stepper motor pulleys. If these are loose, you can experience all kinds of gremlins. On a Core X wire machine, it's particularly important to make sure that all of the idlers are still properly tensioned and that there's no slop in the system. Some components of the hot end are extra important as they relate to safety. It is imperative for your printer that the thermistor and heater cartridge are in place securely. Careful not to over tighten this bolt holding in the thermistor to avoid severing the wires. Ensure that the heater cartridge is held firmly in place. If this falls out and touches your printed part, there's a very good chance that it will catch on fire instantly. You can also tighten the nozzle against the heater block, but this is best done hot, so the two can track together as the parts cool down. Make sure to reinstall any silicon socks as to not upset your PID tuning of the hot end. If you've been printing with a range of different filaments, or if you've accidentally left the nozzle sitting hot with filament baking inside it, there's a good chance you'll have some build up gunk on the inside. Previously, our only option was to do a cold pull, but for this video, we're gonna test cleaning filament. To use it, we bring up the nozzle to the temperature of the last filament we printed with, in this case, 200 degrees for PLA, and then we simply insert the cleaning filament into the hot end and manually push it through until it's a consistent white with no blemishes. You should only need somewhere around 10 to 20 centimeters each time you do this, so it will last a long time. Make sure to unload it when you're done. Now we've got some miscellaneous components that didn't fit anywhere else. The plastic extruder lever arm on Creality printers is prone to snapping, so inspect it for any cracks. At first glance, this one seems okay, but the filament has actually worn a groove on the inside of the filament path, and over time, that will continue to grind away and make the part fail. Interestingly, on newer printers, there's a metal insert in place to prevent this from happening. The PTFE tube and couplers 
can cause clogs and jams if they're loose. Loosen the fitting, push them the whole way in, and then tighten the fitting again to make sure they're seated properly. One component that could be out of sight and out of mind is your extruder drive gear. It's normal for small parts of filament to break off and start to clog the edges of these teeth, and this is easily removed by using a cheap toothbrush, although preferably not the one that you still use on your mouth. When the filament is brushed off, a quick blow of air will remove the debris. Finally, firmware. And if it's been some time since you used the printer, you may want to consider this. Although if you have the minimum of thermal runaway installed on your firmware, this may not be necessary. On a 3D printer such as the Prusa, where the firmware is regularly updated, it's probably worth checking in more often and updating to get the latest features. That's the end of my list, but if I miss something you think is good, I'd love for you to share it down below in the comments to aid your fellow viewers. Maintenance isn't the most exciting thing, but I think with machines like this and their potential safety hazards, prevention is definitely better than cure. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.